Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to today's behavior clinic, which is on dogs' body language. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be a really important one. I think this is like a missing puzzle piece in a lot of people's toolbox with their dogs. Um, do you agree, Lois? Absolutely. Yeah, and it's really important. It's going to probably be the first thing that a behaviorist would come and teach our clients. This is what we would talk about. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, so I'm Nikki, <laughs> your group founder. I should introduce who I am. Your group founder and um, behaviorist. And this is Lois, my fellow integrative behaviorist. Lois, tell us about yourself. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, um, don't look at me. Hi. Yeah, um, I'm a fully qualified behaviourist specialising in resource guarding, reactivity and adolescent dogs, the cheeky monsters of the dog world. Amazing. And you've got some puppies there. Are they in the room with you still? Yeah, they're still in the room. Oh, OK, so we might hear some little peeps. Um, I, like, I like that you've said that you are a fully qualified behaviourist <laughs> because that has been... The topic on the group the last few days is how do you know whether the person that you are asking to help with your dog's behavior is fully qualified because qualified because we're in an un, sadly in an unregulated industry where anyone like a painter could call themselves a behaviorist um, and could get away with it which is really sad because I think this is an issue that surrounds the value that we place on our dogs, the importance of a dog's life. So when we talk about a fully qualified behaviorist, we're talking, we're in agreement on this, aren't we, Lois? We're talking about a minimum BSc, which is a level six qualification, which is a university qualification. Because when you're dealing with behaviors, like, I know this is not body language, I'm going off on one, but we'll come back to it. That's all right. <laughs> when we're dealing... Continue. <laughs> when we're dealing with, Behaviors such as aggression, fear, trauma, then, you know, as a human, we wouldn't be going to someone with an A level qualification or a GCSE or online diploma or something. But with a dog, that seems to be like it's okay. And I think, I mean, I can't speak for our members or our group, but wouldn't you want the most, the fully qualified, someone is qualified to. A university degree level to be yes I know we're in agreement because we're just talking um yeah so we are as a group we're putting together a document to help everyone to identify what is a fully qualified what in our opinion and what and kind of how to suss out what people are putting across as though they are fully qualified you know what are these bcc blah blah blahs or animal sciences, or these different things that actually don't mean animal behavior. Um, so I hope that'll be helpful to everyone. Anyway, enough on that. Let's see if anyone is here in our group. I uh, So Lois, today you are going to lead us because you have a, oh, hi, Amy. Hi, Fiona and Ruth. Anyway, can't name everyone. Um, you have a presentation that you've done that you never got to do. So you put something together for something else, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they never got to do it. So I am going to, this is your moment. This is your moment of shining light. That <laughs> <laughs> you can take us through this presentation on dog's body language. And I guess, what do we want to know from our members? Um, let me just share. Oh, can I find it? What do we want to know from our members? Have you got any questions for us that you specifically, maybe is there anything about dog's body language that puzzles you or that you want to ask a question about? Do you put it in the comments and we will answer them. But for now, we're just going to start on understanding canine communication signals. Okay, Lois, you tell me when you want me to change page. I'm going to turn around and hope that I'm not shiny, but I might be. <laughs> right. So, canine community. I think the best way I can put this is dogs 
at the end of the day, we are taking we are speaking two completely different languages with our dogs. They have their own communication signals with each other and we have our own language. And there seems to be a bit of a conflict between the two. Um, and ultimately to get onto the best relationship or the best starting point with your dog, you have to understand their communication skills. And yet it's not something that we widely discuss with dog owners. And I think we should be. Um, that's certainly my finding over the well, since I've started this. Um, and I had to go and learn how to read the really, really subtle signs right at the beginning. Um, because it wasn't something that was covered in my degree, which again, maybe should have been, <laughs> but it wasn't. So ultimately your dog is incredibly subtle in how they communicate with you. It's not in a dog's best interest to get themselves an injury. Or to hurt so dogs don't always revert to a bite or they shouldn't and yet as people that's what we take as the base point of well my dog's not happy because it's growled or it's or it's snapped or it's bitten actually there's a lot of communication signals in there before we even get to that point um and dogs are incredibly subtle until you know how to read them and then they're as subtle as a brick <laughs> <laughs> you won't miss them once you know what you're looking for OK, but you also have to remember that some of these behaviors we do have to take into context with the rest of the energy in the situation as well. All right. OK. Next slide. Yes. So we as behaviorists use something called the ladder of aggression. And all that basically means is how your dogs communicate with each other and with themselves during a stress response so when there's stress starting to be introduced into the system that's all that means so down on the bottom of the ladder we've we've got green so it should be going up but never mind um <laughs> just my brain clearly wasn't working when i did this but actually it was because it'll make sense as we go through so down at the bottom of this ladder we've got this lovely green area okay so right at the bottom you've got yawning blinking and nose licking so yawning generally if we're seeing yawning in a dog yes they can just be tired <laughs> mm -hmm. yes there's always like, context there's always context yeah, mm -hmm. always got to take it in context if there's a bit of stress in a yawn you will hear a bit of a whine behind it um and there's a little bit more the face is a lot tenser than it is if it's just in that if it's just a natural yawn i'm tired um so that's yawning blinking again you've got to take it into context it's incredibly subtle for some dogs and then you've got nose licking so the photograph on the top of this i tried to find examples as we went through different areas but the photo at the top of this is actually just a beautiful a beautiful photo of what a nose lick can look like so the dog just simply flicks their tongue over their nose again take it into context if your dog's just had something to eat it doesn't count um and then they revert and that's your first kind of baby signals that a dog will respond with to show them to show you that they're not happy now some dogs in particular i've seen this in french bulldogs rather than flick their tongue over the nose they flick the tongue off the top of their mouth so you don't see it but you hear it oh, okay. um, interesting i've definitely seen it in a hell of a lot of frenchies seems to be more of a bull breed specific thing so it is again something to be aware of um, and then up from there, you've got your turning your head away or showing the white of the eye. So when you've got a dog straight on, that's actually quite rude in the dog's world. So you will mm -hmm. find a lot of dogs will just try and disengage the situation slightly and turn their head to the side. But as they do that, they then show the white of their eye. It's what we call wheel eye or wall eye. It has mm. different. Can different I just interrupt there? Because that's that's exactly what Merlin did when this where I've got a dog bite now is because he showed those, he tried to appease and bring down this stress that was going on tension from this other dog by doing exactly that. He turned, but he did also open his neck up. He turned and I could see the white of his eye and that's what made me go, oh God. And then I looked at the dog and the dog was like, well, he wasn't taking that. He wasn't responding to that cue, so he just went for him because he saw an opportunity to. Common. So yeah, sorry, just to give you an All right. live yeah. example. Carry on. Again, you can kind of see it in the bottom of the photo. So the dog hasn't just turned its head to the side; it's also put its nose down to the ground to show the other dog that actually it isn't a threat in this instance. 
Now, a word of warning for white of the eye. This is a beautiful, again, I've seen this a hell of a lot in French Bulldogs because A, they've made up my caseload for about 90% of my caseload for the last three years. Mm -hmm. um, but you can get some of your bull breeds. They show the white, if they turn their head, they show the white of their eye. And then on a split second, that's attached to your hand. And you're like, whoa, we seem to find out several things in between. <laughs> there is a reason for that and we'll go through it later but it is something to be aware of and this is a big communication signal in a lot of dogs so you've got from just turning your head away you've then got a little bit more going on your dog's going to turn its full body away so it turns everything to the side it'll show the shoulder opens up the neck shows the shoulder and down onto the front leg pawing now pawing and sitting this is a strange one to put in and everyone's like well surely the dog's showing that especially if it's sitting that it's comfortable with the situation and this is when we get a little bit of conflict popping up in the sense of these are what we class as displacement behaviors. So reading the context of the situation is very, very important for these to happen. Is your dog possibly stressed and going, can someone please come and help me rather than so I don't have to deal with it myself? Um, I would possibly say I would see these more in puppies um, and in youngsters that aren't feel it, feeling fully settled in a scenario. Um, rather than in a stance of, say, an adult dog that's a bit more sure of themselves. Mm -hmm. And then on that last one, walking away. Walk A dog that is able to walk out of a situation is gold. Can dogs do this naturally? No. <laughs> you have to teach them. There's not many dogs that can do this naturally. Go, okay, I'm here. Oh, hang on a minute. I'm not 100% happy. I'm just going to kind of walk back the way I came. Merlin this, did that once. Good, good. It is lovely to see. And some dogs can do it, but other dogs, we do actually have to teach them this bit. It, it doesn't come naturally to a lot of dogs. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Yeah, uh, he the wide birth of something. He was like, I'm not happy, but it was very slow, like almost like cat, you know, with a cat yeah. putting out their paws very deliberately as they're walking, quite tensely, like, I'm just going to go around. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and some dogs do. And those are the ones that you don't tend to see get themselves into as much trouble unless the other dog has read the communication wrong. Mm -hmm. So I think it's safe to say at this point, whilst we've just got to this bit, um, that actually not many dogs, although there are species in their own right and they should know these signals, a lot of dogs don't actually know them. This is something that they learn from mum. So if you're using a, a dam, We'll call her a dam because we're being polite. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that doesn't understand communication signals or doesn't have the correct cues. She cannot then teach them to puppies because she doesn't know them herself. So sometimes as humans, we have to step in a little bit and help them out and try and what you've done with Merlin, actually teach them how to speak dog because they don't realize that there is something that they have to do. Mm. Yeah, this, the, I mean, we'll probably come onto it in a second, but sometimes if Merlin is over sniffing, you know, I step in to say, and we do, I do a little rattle on the lead if he's on a lead, just going, it's sniffing a little bit too much, or I can't remember what I say in the moment, but I'm like, yeah, just to say, and then he, he, he does come back, you know, he does pull away. Well, alrighty, next one. Next one. So we actually, we have a couple of questions. Should we answer a couple of questions or yeah? So we've got all of Rupert's yawns seem to be stress yawns at the moment. Ah, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Amy. Um, maybe tell us a bit more about that. Yes. Yeah. And then Sam says, Rocket pulls when I put his harness on. He holds up one leg, if that counts. He really doesn't like his harness going on, even though we do all the desensitization stuff regularly. Yes, that's a good point, actually. I've just started a case um, who her one warning signal is she lifts her paw and then she bites badly. <laughs> that's oh. it. That's the patient signal I've got. Um, so it can be, I suppose, it's, you've already, he is uncomfortable with his harness. That's kind of where we go back to the scenarios of, okay, we've done the desensitization work, but have we still got this potential conflicts of emotion almost in the sense of I really really want the nice thing because I love food because most dogs do but I really really don't like this negative thing of a harness and it could just be the, the style of the harness doesn't fit it could just be some dogs don't like that constriction that constrict feeling that you get in a harness um 
even though harnesses are better and we recommend harnesses sometimes there's lots of other reasons why we've kind of got to look into the sense of okay what's going on with a harness that dogs potentially are uncomfortable with mm, yeah but he is communicating yeah yeah. That, yeah beautiful and amy says rupert runs away when i pick up his harness so yeah there is some some things around harnesses okay we'll carry on yeah. um, oh that's just some more pictures so we can see do you yeah. want to say anything about this top picture so this top picture is a beautiful example of we've got one dog that's been a bit over i would say he is being overbearing to a point. I suspect the dog, it's a picture, it's a moment in time, so it's hard to tell without everything else. But I would say this is a young dog who's just like, I'm going to come in for a sniff, but he has done slightly in the sense of he's come from the side rather than face on, which we'll come to in a minute. The other dog's going, no, I'm not really happy about this. Can you can you just back okay. off a little? Can you get your nose <laughs> out my mouth? Spatial awareness, please. Yeah. Spatial. <laughs> Some dogs facial awareness the cocker that's in my room currently thinks she should live on my head so we don't <laughs> <laughs> um so yes it's great fun and then down at the bottom we've got this chihuahua that's actually showing quite a few signs that it's not happy and i think chihuahuas or these small breeds get a really hard deal because a lot of people are like let's just pick it up because it's cute it's still a dog yeah. and a lot of these dogs hate being picked up hate it with a passion and um, so this dog is showing beautifully all the signs of ears are back and pinned down to the head it's showing the white of their eye its mouth is quite tight it's got a paw raised and it's also sat down and scrunched it's not what we would class as a relaxed sat down it's a very um, tense tummy there as well everything is you can see how much tension there is on the and jaw mm. would still then go in and go oh but i'm going to touch the dog anyway nine times out of ten i would say that would be an incidence where you may lose a finger yeah because i think that this lip is going to start to yeah. curl up next and getting that impression to show the teeth is the next one like mm, kind of yeah. warning do you like my impression yeah i love it it's fine. <laughs> okay are we happy to and of course the paw is up as a kind of i'm also trying to tell you i'm not i'm not comfortable Yep. I'm not comfortable here. It's almost like a please, isn't it? It's like a try yeah. not to try to tell yeah. you. Yeah, it can be please, and it can also be a I'm thinking about what I'm going to do next. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. So now we're kind of up into the yellow slash orange, depending on the what color of the charts we're using. But so this is where your dogs are kind of going up a little bit in their stance. So the behaviors that they're showing are becoming a hell of a lot more prominent than not as easy to miss although they still can be missed um so you've got creeping that's that stalk like behavior that you're seeing off merlin he's doing a nice a nice impression of so you've got creeping for some dogs it's it can be a i'm not going to be a threat so they come in low mm -hmm. and then they go forward like a cat um, others would do it when they're just a little bit unsure about what's going to happen at the end of it and what you generally get after it or after a bit of this creeping behavior is you will then get that bouncy bouncy bounce to side to side mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so suddenly changes into play yeah. all fun okay i'm closer i've got that scent yeah <laughs> it's good um we're good to go and they will bounce 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 others it's very very tight and still creep 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 and then but depending on what they're picking up or what they're giving off you then may get a lunge and a bark and, and whatever else so it can go both ways for a creeping yeah, I tend to, I don't know what your opinion on this is, Lois, but I, when, if Merlin's creeping, because he's got kind of just trying to suss out most of the time, he's just like trying to suss out and he'll stop and go down and suss out, get the scent, and then he'll either go for a play or he'll uh, avoid. Um, what I tend to do is I come down next to him. So there's two of us and I stop. If he hasn't stopped, I stop him. So there's more space. And then that dog can come in and then he can get it. And I just feel that that is a little bit less intense. Um, but yeah, nine times out of 10, it's like, <laughs> waggy tail, I'm so excited. Yeah, okay, interesting. I think a lot of people might ask about the creeping. I get asked that quite a lot. Is there anyone that has any more? Um, yeah, okay, sorry, carry on. All right quite a common one so i suppose the dog at the top was probably the best kind of photo i could get of one in the sense of it is creeping because everything's lowered slightly it's awesome 
sorry, its backside is definitely lowered towards the ground. Um, and its tail's under, you've then got that foot up, the head's low and everything's quite tightened down. So it was the best kind of photo I could find to display it. I've now got a collie, so I could probably get a better one. Um, get one of Merlin, but Merlin's would be quite different from this because what I'm noticing about this is that the hairs are standing up on me. Yeah. This is not a, this is, I think he's already picked up. This is a threat coming. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we need a couple of different ones. Um, you've then got ears pulled back. Now, ears in the dog world can get missed and it's down to design fault due to humans interfering. So the easiest dogs to read are what we class as your primitive breeds, so their ears are upright. <laughs> you've got a dog with floppy ears, you're actually reading the muscles on the top of the head rather than the ear itself because floppy ears don't really do much um, as a as a side. So you're kind of looking at the whole head and the muscles around the top of the head to be able to read a dog, like a spaniel or anything else. Um, whereas your print it, primitive breeds are a hell of a lot easier so your german shepherds your your malamutes your huskies french bulldogs they've got upright ears this is why i get french bulldogs get such a bad rep is because they've got a smushed face no tail <laughs> poor sods and upright ears and a lot of dogs are like what the hell are you i can't read you i can't yeah. read you yeah oh bless um, and your bulldogs as well, I suppose, I'll come into that sense because they're, they're smushed as well. A lot of dogs are like, whoa, but that's a, we'll go there in a minute. Mm -hmm. So your ears, you'll love my dog impression ears. <laughs> we'll use hands. So ears full kind of forward. Everything's pulled forward, focus, um, bolt upright. And they're quite, they're almost kind of brought up to the front of the head, aren't they, when the ears are pulled up, pulled right. Okay, look, there's something over there that needs my attention. Mm -hmm. If they're kind of just bobbing about and they're relaxed, everything's nice and chilled, as is the rest of the body language, there's nothing to be worried about. One ear forward, one ear back, and that can happen on either side. There's something in the distance that needs my attention, but there's also something on my back end that could be something to be concerned about. So if you're walking your dog, you will generally find that the side that you're walking on, your dog's ear will be pulled back on that stance because your dog's kind of checking in all the time with that ear. That's cool. Ears pulled back can be, we've got to take this into context because it can have quite a few. Ears pulled back, everything wiggling. I mean you no harm and I am loving life. <laughs> <laughs> Ears pulled That's back. That's a people pleaser right there. <laughs> <laughs> love me, love me. <laughs> It is pulled back, everything tight and still. Mm -hmm. And you can feel the energy in these stances. I'm not happy. If you've got a wrinkly breed, all the wrinkles get pulled back. Everything is very, very tight. Mm -hmm. But ears are fantastic. Or they can be. <laughs> Standing crouched. So this can go into your creeping. It can just be in a stance in itself. Everything just gets pulled in. So... Everything underneath is like a, what's the word I'm looking for? A vulnerable area. Because you've got all your soft organs underneath, haven't you? So there's not as much. And we've got the bones protecting everything. So everything underneath is a little bit more vulnerable. So your dogs just pull everything in. They can kind of hunch over. They can crouch down into the ground. If they're sat like the dog that's in the middle, you have got, they've, they've just lowered themselves slightly. Yeah. This, Again, and this stance is actually unhappy um, because again, everything's lowered and quite crouched, like crouched in. It's also got the whale eyes here and the turn of the head and the tense mouth, yeah. I'll get the bottom as well as also showing standing crouch. So everything's tucked in. You've then got tail tucks under. So again, this is why some of your breeds don't get the, the reps that, well, dogs don't understand them because the tail can actually tell us a lot about the dog. And just because your dog is waggling their tail does not mean that they're not going to bite you in the next instance either. Mm -hmm. Are we coming on to tails? Because oh, I love talking about tails. We're coming on to about tails. You can, you can add in for tails as well. Um, tails are fantastic in the sense of, so in the sense, what we generally see when a dog is unhappy or wanting to hide their scent is they pull and tuck their tail underneath. Now, if you have a dog that can't do that, we're in a bit of a pickle because they can't do it. Okay. Um, so this is, sorry, uh, center. 
There you go. Um, someone's trying to ring me. How dare they? <laughs> it's so popular. Only a quarter cent and nothing to be exciting about. So they tuck in their tails underneath. So if your dog doesn't have a tail or because it's been bred like that or because they're docked, I have docked dogs in the house. Um, and again, it, we, we've miss, we've we've played around with a communication signal, so we have to be aware of it. Um, so tail underneath, I'm not happy. The higher the tail, the more aroused the dog. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of. But again, you've got to take this into context of breed. So the likes of your, your Huskies or your Sharpays or who else? Even your Tibetan Terrier, I guess. It's always yeah. got tails uh, always over, high over their heads. Yeah, not over their head, but you know what I mean? Over their back. Back, yeah, it's all tail killed in um so you've also got to take into context breed and this is why a lot of your dogs get a little bit pent up over over tails because actually hang on a minute what the hell is your tail saying because your tail's saying one thing and then your body's saying another um so likewise your primitive breeds having fantastic ears that tail can actually let them down in some instances and get them into trouble mm -hmm. okay yeah so you've got your tails tucked under You've then got up there. This isn't actually on the ladder, and I've put it in humping. Hmm. Say, okay. well, my dog's humping other dogs, so he must be a sex pest. <laughs> yeah, that one often. <laughs> I find it very funny. <laughs> yeah, so do I. Um, <laughs> get it from you. You hear it in people for as young as the puppies have. They've brought their puppies home at eight weeks. Oh, he's humping everything, so he's going to be a right sex pest as he gets older. Well, actually, he's not. Because it can actually be a multitude of reasons why he's doing it in the first place. And very rarely is it linked to hormones. It's only linked to hormones if there is a, um, a female involved, shall we say. So you have got... Humping can be used as a communication signal to suppress another dog. Um, so you will get it higher up in your functional characters. That's a whole other conversation for another day. Um it can be used if the dog is anxious. It can be used if your dog is overtired. You may see dogs start to hump others. Um, overexcited. Mm -hmm. Definitely see that on the play date. That, the Cavalier play date, we saw that. <laughs> and it's also interesting in the sense of you will get it in males and females. I've got females in this house that are worse than my boys. Um, you will see it in both. But likewise, you may also see it depending on, we all know the one dog that gets like, you'll have a male dog and everyone else tries to hump it. Because That's exactly it. Yeah. What happens in those instances is actually, you generally find that those males have either come from a female heavy litter, so they're more feminine, mm -hmm. or they have been flagged between two female pups in, a litter, in, a, in utero. And that can then change the scent wow. that they life. So there you go. That's really interesting. Yeah, they are. It's definitely they're giving off a scent and a vibe of, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. There you go. There's, there's a little bit of science geeky stuff if anyone's really okay. interested. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that's that slide. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, any questions, just pop them in the comments about your dog's tail, humping. <laughs> yeah. Um, ear, ears yeah yeah okay. so these are oh no yeah we're on to the next one <laughs> so the big one up at the top is actually my big girl when she was a bother oh it's just gorgeous <laughs> it's one instance of a play bow so we'll talk about play bows and I yeah I have put it in there so again play bows aren't actually on the the ladder of aggression and yet they, they're quite relevant and they they should be talked about so we're now going up again into the ladder. So the behaviors are just getting a little bit more set as to what, what's coming. So you've got lying down. Now lying down is one of these big areas where the dog gets a lot, a lot of conflict because owners will, oh yeah, but the dog's lying down. So I'm going to touch his tummy and then wonder why they get bitten. Mm -hmm. Lying down, mm -hmm. yeah, big one. Um, lying down can just be a, I mean, you know, harm because I've got everything that's vulnerable on show. Have a sniff and please leave me alone. Now, if you see dogs do this to each other, you will have one dog lie down and they sniff from the top of the, from the face down into the neck. Some dogs will actually put their mouth around that dog's neck 
and then they continue to sniff down into into their private areas and then ideally the dog should be allowed to get up at that point but that dog is showing that it doesn't actually mean any harm to that other dog that's all it says now if your dog's lying down and being a rug oh leg in each corner it's nice and chilled but likewise a lot of dogs still don't want that fuss and we're all guilty of it rather than just a nice gentle stroke we go oh and da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. dog's like whoa what the hell do you think you're doing <laughs> i'm showing you like <laughs> yeah. don't, you know i mean no harm just give me some space and uh yeah you're doing the opposite yeah shame my oh, poor um, doggies they, yeah. they, t- dogs take so much time learning our language as well and how to read us. Like staring straight in the eyes is not dog language. We've taught them that and they really use it to communicate with us and so many different signals that, yeah, this is so important for us just to give back to our dogs and really understand them, their language. Indeed. So that's lying down. Sometimes you will see the lie down be quite tight oh my god I'm doing this but I'm really really not comfortable other times it will be very relaxed so you've got to really take it into context of the dog but never just rush off and touch your dog's tummy because you may lose a finger um (laughs) put it mildly leg up so leg up we generally see on a lie down as well you will have some breeds that will just never ever do this they're not comfortable to do it there is going to be a very loud bark because my delivery has arrived (laughs) Um, it's like brace yourself yeah, brace yourself, guys. I do apologize. Um, hang on. Oh, message from mom to see if she can. Oh, she's there. It's all good. She knows. Good, <laughs> good mom. <laughs> awesome. Um, so you've got your leg up. Now, generally we see this where in dogs that lie down, so they kind of just open up their back it, their back leg and it lifts up so the dogs can then have a really, really good sniff of that area. They will also do it as a sign of trust to people. So if you've got a dog that's opening up and allowing you to trust the inside of that back leg, it's a major trust thing. Mm-hmm. A lot of dogs will. Likewise, you also see it when the dog's kind of stood up. I've got one that does it beautifully in the sense of she comes and stands in front of you and then lifts her leg and you say, well, touch me here. Um, <laughs> and that so they can also do it standing up or whilst I sat down as well so you've then got hackles up so the hackles is just the hair on the back of your dog so the back of the neck all the way down to the backside, and it's all the way up I put they look like little hyenas when they're up full swing don't they? Um, you can't really tell this with spaniels I find with the spaniels, yeah, I agree with that um Torvi does it very very well but she's got a different slightly different coat on her back so she can do it but my, I think you yeah, can my, tell just by the muscles yeah under the coat more you can just tell there's a little bit of a lifting <laughs> yeah definitely okay um, now hackles up a lot of people are like well my dog's hackles are up so it's going to attack something not necessarily all it means is it can mean that it's a sign of the arousal levels are going up. That's all it means. The arousal levels are going up. So what's going to then come next? Dogs can put their hackles up when they're excited, frustrated, anxious, or fearful. They can do it on all. So we're looking at the whole picture. We're looking at the whole body. Is there tension in the whole body? how you know is the tension in the mouth what are the ears looking like and then that will help guide you as to about these things where hackles for instance can mean many different things and the context of what's going on is the other dog being quite reading cues or are they still coming in or they you know what's happening in like the whole context um lois can i just ask a question from sam so rocket lifts his leg when lying down for most people good to know that's a trust sign as i've always been a bit worried it could be tether seems nope yeah it's yeah. nice it's a nice especially if it's, it's also like if it's it's opening it's like a wide yeah. isn't it i mean i'm trying to think of anything that would be tense and closed if it's tense and closed in movement i mean that's different it's, that is it's like a an, an, an invitation, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It's an invitation. But I, I guess maybe where it could be is that where they're trying to please. Now that could be it, couldn't it? What is, what is that word that you always use? It's just gone out of my head because the delivery, my delivery driver has just pulled up. But um, <laughs> when they're trying to please you, but they're actually feeling the opposite. So maybe that could be relevant for Rocket. I don't know. Just um, 
Just tell us that bit, Lois. So your conflict of emotion can pop up in lots of areas. Conflict it? of emotion, yeah. It's one, it's it's when your dog shows you one thing, but then it's feeling the other in a nutshell. So I really, 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 really want the food, but I'm really, really fearful of the instance that I'm getting it is probably the easiest example to give. And you get it in touch as well. So dogs that are incredibly touch sensitive, at some point down the line, there will have been this conflict of emotion that's then now gone, the dog's gone, yes, yeah, sod it, I just don't like the thing. Mm -hmm. So that could perhaps be relevant where you've got to be careful but, about that. Is it being trained in or are they trying to please? Yeah. Okay, cool. Carry on. Um, Grant, right. Play bows. <laughs> so we've got two examples here of perfect play bows, both saying very, very different things. So Yanni at the top, he's my girl, um, who's, yeah. That's like a seal or something. <laughs> <laughs> and flat. Tail's very relaxed. Yes, it's up, but it's relaxed. It's just kind of popped to the side. The leg, in theory, she should have been more in a bit of a, a play stance, but she's 50 kilos and knows how to use her weight behind her. Um, and she was play bowing to the boy that we found on the beach. So you will see it. So you can have a play bow like that instance where it's quite relaxed and chilled. You can have a play bow where it's a little bit more bouncy behind it. There's a bit of a bum wiggle in it. <laughs> Dog's playing. Everything's quite fluid. There's a lot of movement there. However, you then have this flip of a coin where the dogs, that this is a beautiful example of, I would love to know how many people would actually go and try and take that ball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's a it lot could, of tension here I'm reading in this yeah. body. A lot of conflict here. So the dog is very, very, it, its stance is very, very still. The placement of that ball is in between their feet, which ultimately is telling everyone else that this is mine. <laughs> it's got its head turned to the side. Now, some dogs would then go, well, this is an invitation because look, the dog's not actually over the top of it. So I'm going to take the thing anyway. But the dog is then also showing the white of the eye and I suspect the mouth is quite tight. Mm -hmm. So everything's ready to kind of just flip back round and potentially have a have a slice nip on the back of it its tail is also very over tight this could also be a breed thing but it is curled right over so there is a level of arousal there as well okay. so play bows can be used to play and to initiate play but they can also be used to create space and it's feeling the energy behind it you've got to read the full dog on a play bow mm -hmm. yeah he's going this is mine it's almost like a yeah yeah it's very i'm ready to, i'm poised to to potentially mm -hmm. and then you've got stiffening up so stiffening up is everything just goes very very tight and still it's hard to miss but it can be missed so if your bull breeds in particular, they kind of plant a foot in each corner. They literally, they square off. There's a foot planted in each corner. They puff out their chest. The weight is pulled right back into that backside and then they're ready to launch forward. Again, you will see that kind of stance in other breeds as well. They, it is literally square off. Everything stiffens, everything's tight. Ears and everything will be full focus forward depending on the dog. You feel the energy change on this one massively. Yeah. Okay. And then you've got stare. So again, this is coming back to something that we've potentially taught dogs, but it is also a communication signal. It's very, very intense, isn't it, when dogs stare? So this is why your collies get themselves into trouble. Mine is a very, very stalky breed. She, very, very stalky example of the breed in the sense of she fixates on one thing and then everyone's else like, I really don't like it. And that's a lot of pressure to have coming from a dog. Mm -hmm. Pressure she's put there. And then she goes, well, you're going to react now. So I'm going to have you. I'm like, this is not a game. <laughs> this is not a game. And I won't always be here to save you. Um, testing them. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. yeah. Can you do me any harm? She's a guide. But that's a question. That's a conversation for another day. <laughs> um, but yeah, everything's very intense on a stare. You, you generally see it paired off with, with a stiffening up as well. 
Um, the dog down at the bottom is actually showing a beautiful example of a little bit of resource garden there because it's got its head placed over the thing, but it's fixed there as if to say, well, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. So these are just more examples of kind of what, what to look out for. So actually, they all display beautifully types of mouth. <laughs> Mouths, yes. There you go. So up at the top, you've got this. I would say that golden retriever is like gonna be one of these over bouncy, exuberant dogs that will get itself into mischief. <laughs> got a, quite a furrowed brow there as well. Yeah. Low Deep in thought. Yeah. yeah. Its mouth could be. I've seen tighter. So mm -hmm. the tighter the mouth, everything gets quite crunched. Um, in some instances. Toby might give you a beautiful demonstration because she curls her nose up at me. Um, she, knows, she curls her nose up at me and then just says, right, touch me now. And I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, but its tail is also up quite high. So it is an aroused dog. You've then got the, the dog in the middle, um, which everything's quite tight. So it could just be this is the breed. Its muzzle is tight. Its tail is up, it's nice straight in the back, so it's got quite a stance on it there. Um, and then down at the bottom, you have got all the weaponry on show. So its tail is up and over, its hackles, mm -hmm. there is a, you can just about see the hackles up on that photo. Yeah. Um, the hackles are up along the back, it's poised and it's ready. There will be noise behind that. Its mouth is open and it's showing all its weaponry, which is just its teeth. Yeah. Okay. Um, right, let's go to the next one. Oh, some more, some more examples. Yeah. Um, so, <coughs> and again, all about the mouths. There you go. So, um, the two little dogs that could, a lot of people are like, whoa, your dogs are fighting. They're my dogs. Um, no, they weren't. They were playing. There was a lot of noise in that stance. However, that kind of poise and when dogs go up, it, it can go one of two ways. These dogs know each other. They know how to disengage off one another. Um, but a lot of dogs, if dogs didn't know each other and that happened, you're kind of losing the movement. So there's no movement there. And that's when a fight can kind of break out a little bit. Um, again, all their mouths, their mouths are open. Their teeth are on show. Paws are on each other's shoulders um so yes it's a nice I just thought it was a nice bit of conflicting body language for you all yeah I suppose what we could tell what could we tell because it's difficult to tell play from it can look yeah. horrendous play like they're gonna like sometimes putting a dog's head in your mouth but um <laughs> I mean the body language here is you've got the tail swishing over to the right to the to the right um and it is from the side and it, I, I would think that in the moment there would be movement it was a little, rather than a yeah, yeah. I am tightly clamped onto you which is a different sort of yeah. scenario yeah there's generally a lot of you're always wanting a lot of noise so you can get very very noisy play if you hear my dogs playing outside on a walk people generally give us a wide berth because it sounds like they're killing each other um <laughs> they're playing you can also get dogs that are very very quiet um, but well, so it, there's more energy going into noise, isn't there? What's when, and again, you're wanting a noise, you're wanting noise. And if there's a dog fight or if anything happens, you're wanting noise in the dog fight. It's when they're silent, that's generally when it's deadly. Yeah. Okay. Um, really um, and then you've got the one up at the top, you've got some beautiful weaponry on show. I suspect these dogs are having quite the discussion. Um, you've got the, the German Shepherd mix that's tails right over, its ears are kind of back, it's got everything's very tight in the face, there's the lips. a snarl there, yeah, yeah. The lips. lips are really lifted, wow. All the teeth are on show, it's a beautiful photograph. Um, the mm. other dog is actually doing everything right in the sense of, yes, it's got its teeth on show, but it's also kind of backed off and lowered as if to say, I'm going to protect myself, but I'm not 100% sure what to make of this. Um, that yeah, if someone didn't in, yeah someone had didn't intervene in that instance that would have been a fight if someone had intervened and pulled them off you would have got lucky and then at the bottom you've got two bull breeds which can show yeah so it's got a little bit of information already on it you've got that fixed gaze it's very very intense 
their mouths are tight and closed um and then you've got the ears kind of flopped over on one and you've so up front on one which is very very interested and then you've got the other one which is kind of the turn a little bit more to the side so again that kind of interaction could go one of two ways Mm. and what would you suggest when you are if you are viewing this as a dog parent I'm going to just go and get something off where I've left at my desk what would you suggest to people to do in this scenario so in that instance personally I would ask I would get your dogs to move away and just to create a little bit more space um this is when you also get this conflict of a lead because you've got all this tension in the lead. The leads will be tight there because you can see how the collars are on the neck. The leads are tight there and that also tells your dog that there's actually something to be worried about. Some dogs will use that as a kind of comfort blanket almost. So it, again, you've kind of got to read the context and it is one of the many reasons I don't actually like dogs meeting on lead, personally. Hmm, interesting. Because I guess also they feel restricted, like they are, they are not in control. As they're well. not in control, yeah. and it's actually incredibly rude in the dog world to have a to have a dog come up onto another dog's face. If you watch dogs interact off a lead, they circle around from the back end and sniff up to the front. That's how dogs communicate. It's incredibly respectful. The leads and dogs meeting head on is a man made issue. We force dogs onto a straight line, and that's not something they're used to. And we're forcing dogs to meet with all this weaponry up front. And that's why there's a lot of conflict. A lot of dogs are like, whoa, hang on a minute, this is rude. If a dog had pulled up and went into your, into my big girl's face like that, she, she, or the Jack Russell actually in that photo, they were quite happily, yeah, it could be interesting. Other dogs are like, whoa, I don't know what this is, so I'm going to do it anyway. And it, yeah, it can be interesting. Yeah, okay. And then we're up into the red. Now these ones, we generally don't miss. <laughs> yes. we're up it's, in it's always too late now, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're up into you the know, red. We're up, we're up into the red a lot territory. before it yeah. gets to this point. And then we're like, <laughs> oh, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're a bit um, in the in the bugger here right so growling oh i've got so much to say on growling there's noise obviously here and you will have different variations of a growl so generally you have a very very low warning growl it's very low it's almost like a rumble isn't it in the throat mm -hmm. now i hear it time and time again if your dog is growling please do never ever tell it off for growling I hear it come from trainers. I hear it come from breeders. I hear it come from rescues. If your dog's off, you tell, if your dog is growling, you tell it no. Or I, the last one I heard was no noise, like being told. No noise, yes. And a no play noise. date, no noise when her dog was trying to express to the other dog. Okay, that's a bit much now. Yeah. You know, it's like expressing himself and then the as human is telling him no noise. That takes that away, that ability. Uh -huh. So your it? growling is the final warning for what comes next. And what comes next hurts like hell, to put it mildly. Now, if your dog is told off for growling often enough, they stop. Once they stop, it's the equivalent of taking the batteries out of smoke alarm. You get no warning at all. And it can never, ever be retaught, ever. Once you lose the growl, it's out. And that's it. Mm -hmm. So have you missed the subtle signs and then you wonder why. And I hear it time again. I went out to one. It was a perfect example in the sense of he'd been told off for growling. So he stopped. Um, and then he attacked a toddler. And she went, well, he didn't tell me about it. I says, does he growl? No. I says, have you told him off for growling? Well, yeah, because it's not, they shouldn't be growling. Well, it's good. Right? yeah it's like muting yeah you know, if, if maybe it'd be useful to know like okay so a dog is feeling uncomfortable and then he's trying to say like we would as humans like back off or I'm, I need some space but then you're told don't say that you know shut up or whatever so he's like 
oh, okay, well, I'm feeling even more uncomfortable now. So I, I don't like what's happening. And now I'm going to have to resort to something that maybe I wouldn't have. I'm going to have to resort to the next level because that level has been taken away from me where I can just speak up for myself. And so like as humans, we're taking, yeah, it's really sad because, and because we get judged for it. We get judged if your dog growls. Oh, you know? A lot of stigma, isn't there, around having a dog that growls at you? I growl at me all the time. <laughs> like- Lola talks to me all the time. Yeah, it's expression. Um, and, you know, the thing to do is like, if they're not feeling comfortable and they're growling is you step in and if that if it's another dog that's in the space, remove you know if you're brave, remove that <laughs> that dog, or um, you know get your dog out of there or reassurance. Um, there's many things that you can do to help make them feel more comfortable and take them down the ladder. Yeah, and that's like, actually or with the baby, get the baby to move away. You know yeah. that's classic. That's a really good point. Actually, you can't reassure fear. We hear that all the time. Oh, well, you can't, you can't do that because you're going to reassure fear and it'll then make it worse. It's a load of crap. You I mean reinforce, possibly. like, yeah, yeah. You're not saying, Can yes, not re- exactly. reassure, yeah. force, fear. So please don't think that you can. But yes, if you're growling, take it for the final warning and change the outcome. So if the dog's growling at you, just back off and walk away. If it's growling towards another dog, intervene. If it is safe to do so, obviously um sometimes it's generally you can just go oh come on then let's go and that's enough for some dogs to to kind of shift them off other times if they're on a lead it might be just a little bit of a gentle tug come on we're going this way Mm. whatever um yeah um growling can also be part of play though as well yeah yeah so you will have different tones in your growls so we've got the play growls which are very you've got your puppy growls as well they're quite high they've got higher pitch to them the lower the growl, I would say, in pitch, obviously we're being in serious business when we're going into the really, really low growl. So Yanni is probably one of the best dogs for other dogs to, she's called Nana Dog for a reason in the sense of her communication skills are on point. Um, and she just has to look at another dog and they're like, yeah, I'll not do the thing. <laughs> but when she gets up into that low growl, you're like, oh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. dear. <laughs> um, so yeah, always respect the growl, please. Um, very, very important. I like that. Respect the growl. We need to do a campaign on that. Um, and then you've got, after that, you've got snapping. So snapping can come up on one or two forms. You can have what we class as a air snap or a test snap. And this is where the dog doesn't make contact with the other dog or the person, but you hear the teeth go. So it's like, well, what are you going to do about it? We see this, you will see a lot of test snaps in dogs that have actually got fear-driven behavior or if they have got a pain or a health issue underlying because they're testing the response, are you going to do me damage? If I then go, that other dog goes, oh, you're being an idiot and just walks away, your dog's like, oh, okay, I can relax now. That dog isn't going to do me any harm. If they get a reaction, that's then gone, oh, well, I had reason to do that in the first place so that is your kind of your snap if your snap then kind of hits makes contact it's generally the, the little teeth that the dog's using um, and that's what the marks that you'll get on your hand will be the the little teeth rather than your canines oh, sorry say that again so if the if the dog makes contact on a snap it'll be the little teeth that will make mm. make the mark on your hand um rather than a rather than a canine so meaning that they are testing yeah. rather than intending to get a game yes. in. Yeah. So yeah. So for instance, the bite that I have on my hand. I don't know if you can see Yours it. Yours was a bite, yeah. That is a cane <laughs> that spun straight into my yeah. That was an intention of a bite. Yeah. And it and then it. obviously at the top you have got a bite, and then we go into the bite scale. Yeah. Which is a whole other ball game. Um, which we have already discussed and is on your website it is go to dorsetdogs.com if you want to find out what we're talking about with dog attacks and the bite scale and it's also on our video section is our discussion but then also on the education session is the actual diagram of the bite scale okay so is that it so we can stop the share um let us know any questions have we covered everything for you guys have you got any questions about any other 
dog body language that we can help out with. Let us know. Um, I would like to share this lovely little book. Have you seen this, Lois? Oh, no. It's really lovely. Doggy Language by Lily Chin. And she is an artist and she's worked a lot with, I think, Dogs Trust and other places um, doing the art for their presentations around dog body language. So she's had a lot of experience <clears throat> here. She's just drawn really nice, like how, showing how dogs don't naturally come on a head to head confrontation, that it's usually from the side or around would be a more um, friendly approach. Um, or like you said, from the back first, get the scent and then come in. Um, but yeah, I like this book because it's very, it's like little, and I was just, I was reading it in the bath last night, actually, just to see whether I wanted to share any things, but um, show diagrams um, are quite simple. So here she's like showing when it's play and they're showing all of their teeth and everything, how different that is in terms of how relaxed the body language is. And it's almost like overemphasized, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> like almost like, yeah. So a sight hounds play, it's, I call it the toothy game. And it's when they're, they're kind of moving their mouths from side to side and they're all open and you're like, oh, that really looks really, really, oh. But actually it's just play. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like over the, it's like, Overemphasized over, over, yeah. over the top, yeah, exactly. Um, and she's got a bit about ears. I'm just seeing whether there's um, anything. Oh, the wag. So, yeah, like she's got tight. Can you see this, by the way? Okay, yeah, tight, tight wag, uh, wide wag, and helicopter wag. So it is really interesting. Like people will say that their dog's tail is up like this, and it's wagging like that, and they're saying. Oh, but my dog likes you and i'm going oh my gosh no this is a this is intense and it's very tense and i'm like Wah. whereas this a bit more relaxed is different yeah. and then this where they're slapping the sides of their thumb is like very very friendly but this is not not necessarily it's actually saying yeah i'm pretty i'm probably maybe overexcited or i'm very tense about this and i'm yeah what else can we say about that tail? It does t tell us so much. I know it does tell us so much, doesn't it? Um, I think that's, those are the three major ones, aren't they? Obviously, yeah. we know. So you've got breed context is so important. So just having a tail that's literally just bobbing about, it's nice and relaxed and everything about the body is. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. have got context. Yeah, context. And so I think this is quite nice here. Stiff, yeah. stiff, narrow wags is the top one. So again, that movement of the wag is not very much. Whereas this one, and you can see, look, like the mouth is open. There's something in the mouth. The body's relaxed. The eyes are soft. The, the, in the difference, the mouth is very tight. There's a lot yeah. of tension. The eyes are staring. And the tail is all the way over the back and it's only moving that very little bit of distance. Um, yeah, I wonder if there's anything else in this book. Kind of circled so many pages, I really love it. Um, yeah, I think that was probably it. So that's Lily Chin's book, Doggy Language. Um, if you just wanted a quick guide and, and then Lois, thank you so much because you've given us so much detail and description. It was brilliant. I really enjoyed that. I hope it has been useful to everyone. We'll just see if, if anyone has a last minute question. I'm just going to see if we've missed anyone else's. Oh, we've got one here. Humping beds and cushions every moment. This is Rupert. Oh, Rupert's for almost a week has not had much appetite, pacing and crying and very restless, seems quite stressed. Could it be that he senses a female on heat nearby? Could be. Could be. I um, can sent a bitch for five miles. Yeah, okay, could be that. So it could be, I would expect that more. How old is Rupert? I don't know, Amy, how old is Rupert? <laughs> 
Um, I tend to get more in young dogs, like when it's a novelty, <laughs> when they have these things and they're a bit more of a novelty. Generally, once you get to over two, they're like, yeah, whatever, I'm not really fussed. Um, so in a young dog, I would think, okay, possibly. In an older dog, yeah, I would be ruling out just making sure we're in good health. What else is going on that could be in that bucket? Yeah, it doesn't sound it doesn't sound happy there. Shame. Um, Sorry to hear that. Certainly, but yeah, it's been used as a stress a stress release almost by the sounds of it. I'll do this thing to yeah. to get rid of some stress. Yeah. And that also reminds me, we haven't talked about the shake off. I love the shake off. Oh, yes, oh the God. shake off. It's a lovely shake one, it isn't it? I don't. Where would you see it in the ladder? I reckon that would be kind of up there in the orangey and yellow yellow orange you might see a bit of a shake off yeah I mean I've even taught again Merlin the shake off in terms of I'll ask him for it I'll cue him for it so like if he's just seen like earlier he saw a cat and he's a bit he still hasn't recovered from this whole bite incident that we were in so he's on more high of alert and he bit overreacted a bit to this cat and so we, I took him to a distance and then I'm saying to him okay shake it off shake it off come on you're safe now you're all right you know yeah. And then it's this like, and I do a bit of a shake and then, and then he decides, okay. And it's kind of that releasing of that yes. stress and tension ready to kind of maybe move into a lower level. Yeah. Or, yeah. So you see it quite a lot after, after dogs have either had quite a heavy, intense play session um, or intense training session, you would see it. You also see it when they're interacting with each other. So after especially after dogs have said hello to each other on a lead, they kind of go, oh, right, I've done that, and then shake it off afterwards, and it is just that release of, oh, just let it all go. <laughs> yeah. And another thing where you can tell that, that what there was some stress, whether positive or negative stress, and I'm shaking it off. And so that is another communication signal to another yeah. dog, like maybe don't come at me again for play, give me a little bit of time here or something, yeah. if read correctly. Um, He's 15 months. Um, yeah. So yeah. there's, I would say there's still a novelty, still in that adolescent period. Um, so if it kind of doesn't get any better within the next couple of days, I would be going, okay, it could then be something else. But a lot of calming stuff, a lot of brain games, a lot of downtime, empty the bucket. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Amy, I missed you did say he's 15 months earlier. Yeah, adolescence probably sounds, does sound that way. Um, okay, so we haven't got any more questions. I am going to get us out into the sunshine. Lois, what are you going to do? Um, I am going to go and feed my dogs their breakfast because they haven't had it yet. <laughs> How bad is that? We spent the morning oh. on the beach and then in the woods and in the fields. So they've had a busy morning, but yeah, they require a feed. Good. No judgment here. You're in a no judgment space. <laughs> Oh, happy days, but yeah. And then I might go back out for another walk. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the boy out um, and sit in some sunshine. Yeah, make the most of it. Yeah, thank you so much. So we can find Hello. Lois, you can find you on Facebook at... Where? Lois at Yanni's Friends. And you can find uh, me at Chilled Out Dogs and also... DorsetDogs.com is the main, our main group website. Um, and I'll put the, pop this video there. Thank you so much. I hope, and anyone listening on the replay, just ask your questions. We'll come back to you. And yeah, sending you all lots and lots of love. Mwah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.